fears. Well done by the youngster, Dion Nicolaitis. Hits the deck and gets a free kick for the boys in yellow. And, but for the Australia Cup, you'd be just about starting to write the post-mortem on, on Heidelberg's season. Obviously, they, they can't be relegated. They can't make the finals They're in the league. They're just stuck in purgatory at the moment. They're going to lose out on a chance to take the Doherty Cup. But that Australia Cup could provide a chance to finish on a high and maybe a consolation here as it's a great cross into the middle and pins flick on. There's always manoeuvring wide of Nick Feely's goal. Just watching Nick Feely there with the ball kid. The ball kid threw it at him. He punched the ball back and said, hold it, just leave the ball there. I'm going to get it from the other ball kid. That's just pure gamesmanship there from the vet. That's the experience. That That's why, Nick, they've, they've taken the, the punt on on a Nick Feely, who yeah. I, I think it's it's clear is, is not at 100% fitness, definitely with the laboured nature of his well, He's his not even taking the goal kicks at the off moment. Off his line. That kind of sums that, it up. That might be part of the gamesmanship as well, but it, it definitely was um, what he was doing in the elimination final last year when he picked up this hip injury that's caused him such a bother. I do hope that he's all good because, you know, that Oakley are going to need him. They're really going to need the run home, especially, you know, the, the uncertainty around Lockie Hart's Well, I, I dare say Lockie Hart has, from my re reports at Jack Edwards last week, done his other shoulder. He did do his other... His, he, has, he has the worst luck. He like, has. Just rotten luck with injury. Uh, I would say, given the amount of time we saw him out at the back end of last season, that's probably going to put the line through yeah. for, for 2023. So we, yeah, hope, we hope George Bitsios is all good after suffering concussion. And, you know, concussions can vary from how long you can be out for. So mm -hmm. we hope that he's all good and he passes the relevant test. But, yeah. To the air by Habib. Oh, struck on the volley, but... Oy. Oh, what an acrobatic clearance from... Joe Guest? I believe no? it was Brandon oh, Lundy. Brandon Lundy. Nicolaitis. Hasn't let up in spite of difficult circumstances. Jamal Ali casts his head to the sky. And, oh, it's kicking off a little bit here between Ali and Brandon Lundy. It's all gotten a little bit unsavory. I'm looking at Anton Lennar. In the back end of this his, game. He's got his hands up and he says, I'm not doing a thing. He's the traffic warden. <laughs> He's keeping everything controlled. Josh Parrish, it's, it's kicking off down there on your side of the pitch. Are you, are you staying safe on the touchline? Yeah, it's, the temper's flaring all over the place at the moment. I, I think Brandon Lundy thought that Jamal Ali actually kicked out at him. I think they actually just tripped over each other by accident, and Ali was trying to plead innocent there. But such are the, uh, the tempers and the emotions on the touchline after what has been a controversial game. Uh, any perceived slight is going to blow up. And I can see that right on your shoulder, Josh... Oakley uh, making a, a substitution. Alex Salmon, the third and potentially final goal scorer, is making way for a, a substitution that will put a smile on a lot of people's faces, I dare say. Yes, indeed. Jacob Eliopoulos coming back uh, from long-term injury. He's had his problems. Uh, it's actually kicked off with a Heidelberg supporter going over to the Oakley bench. Hopefully this is sorted out, but a uh, positive story there is Eliopoulos coming on to play a holding midfield role in his return to football. Thanks, Josh. It is, as you mentioned, great to see Jacob Eliopoulos back out there on the park. He is a man who has been through so much in the last year. And Oakley haven't given up the ghost of another goal. It's turned towards goal by Wade Decker, but wide in the end. Jacob Eliopoulos has made four appearances, played 28 minutes on his return from ACL injury in the league this season. But it is just, it really does put such a smile. It warms your heart to see Jacob Eliopoulos back out there on the field because obviously he, he battled through that ACL recovery, his second ACL injury at the, the ripe or well, young age of, of 26. And as if that wasn't enough. He lost his father and brother. And he's going to be now, as the full-time whistle sounds, a Doherty Cup champion. Oakley finally have their date with Doherty Destiny. They have tried and failed at the final hurdle twice. The pain of 2022 
going down to the Bentley Greens, lingered for a long while, but they have washed that all away with an emphatic final performance. 3-0, they defeat Heidelberg United in the Doherty Cup final. Two goals from the penalty spot from Joe Guest before Alex Salmon sealed the deal. There was a red card that well and truly changed the balance of the game early on into the first half through Aidan Fedahadzic. But Oakley Cannons get their moment in the sun in the Doherty Cup. And you have to say, Nick, on the balance of their performance, not just in this final, but in the lead-up, only conceding two goals along the way, this is no less than they deserve. Absolutely. Congratulations to Oakley Cannons. They were the better team today. Heidelberg did throw. They, in that first little bit, they looked quite good. They were putting up a bit of a fight. The red card did change things a lot. But just needless mistakes at the key points, you know, you know, getting caught out from a quick free kick and then, of course, as well, the unfortunate mistake for Pierce Clark in the lead-up to Alex Salmon's third goal. But it's deserved. Oakley get their moment. They lift another piece of silverware. It's been a historic 12 months for the Oakley Cannons going all the way back to this time last year. And dare I say it, Lockie, they'll be hoping that this isn't it. They'll be hoping that they're just getting started this year. As for Heidelberg, though, well, as you mentioned, their only real bit of solace is an Australia Cup campaign starts for them next uh, next week against Moreton Bay United. They can hopefully, for their sake, wipe the taste away from a really disappointing 2023 and start to focus ahead to 2024 as well and look to ride the ship again because a team of Heidelberg stature, they'd be very disappointed that you know they're not in the top six, they're not in finals contention this year, and it's such a rarity to see a team like Heidelberg, who are always thereabouts, not being in the race this year. And there was plenty of fire in the second half between the, the players on the on the pitch, particularly as, as tempers flared for Heidelberg, but great to see a, a lot of camaraderie and, and competitive spirit at the end. Handshakes all around and Oakley up and about and getting set to hoist the Doherty Cup for the first time. 3-0 heartbreak in 2015 against South Melbourne. 2-1 devastation in 2022. But 23, the Doherty Cup is the year of the Oakley Cannons. It's been a pleasure to bring you the final on behalf of Football Victoria and Sportscast Australia. Nick, as we start to wrap up here, we're going to get into the presentation shortly. Josh Parrish will be your man. We're not going to throw down to him on the touchline, but he will be the man for the presentations. Doing the ground announcing here, we can see he's studying his notes at the present moment just on the left-hand side of your screen as he gets ready to read out the names of the runners-up, the referees, the victorious Oakley Cannon side, and, of course, the Jimmy Mackay medalist. Nick, are you sticking with your Joe Guest prediction? Uh, 100%. I think he's going to take it home. I'd be very surprised if it's anyone else. But, if look, if I'm going to throw any other names up, I'd probably put Oli Kubelay as a potential smoky along with Alex Fechner. And look at that beautiful trophy. trophy. I mean, you can That's you can see why Oakley have been so desperate for it because very nice. have a look at that bad boy. They are going to be the 98th entrant. 98th. Doherty Cup winner. folklore. The 98th winner. Not a 98th been, club, but winner. No, there have been many repeat entries, but Oakley are a first-timer. There's a lot of... Lovely bespoke badges on the bottom half, and I can just see on the bottom left of the plinth space for an Oakley Cannons badge with 2023 emblazoned on it. Well, Nick, we were talking in the aftermath of the uh, or the you know the, the end of the game as to, to whether or not this could be the start of a potential double for Oakley. Could it be the start of a potential double for Joe Guest? Because look, he hasn't won the Mackay yep. Medal just yet. You would imagine he is favoured. But could the Mackay medal translate into a into another gold medal for him? It really has been a special, special season. I think it's would be eight goals and 15 assists across all competitions. In fact, it's, it's actually 10 goals, 15 assists across yep. all competitions. Uh, I think so. I think he's certainly right up there. And it looks like, you know, he, he's going to take that home this year, and, and, and rightfully so. He, he's had a fantastic season, probably his best. I think in 2023, it's been he's had a tremendous time since he's come down to Oakley, but it's hard to top this, and it's hard to top from anyone in NPL Victoria that he's been able to, you know, the, the, anyone's going to be able to stop him when it comes to that gold medal race at the end of the season. So, kudos to him, kudos to Oakley. Two more games in the regular season for them against North Geelong and Moreland City, where they'll just be hoping to get themselves through. Locky, I think they can't really move from third spot at the no, moment. They're locked in. They just get themselves ready for the 
for the finals and, of course, play Melbourne City. And speak of the devil, we are going to throw it down to the man of the moment. Josh Parrish is on the sidelines with Joe Guest. Well, here post-game with the Oakley Cannons, the Doherty Cup champions, I've got the captain, Joe Guest, with me. Joe, congratulations, mate. How do you, how do you feel to score two goals and take home the trophy? Yeah, obviously um, made up with that. Um, it was a big one for us today, something there we felt like we needed to rectify from last season, obviously missing out at this stage. So, yeah, it was something we set out to do at the start of the season and to be able to accomplish that together today was, was big, yeah. Did you practice any spot kicks in the lead-up? To be fair, we did them on, what day are we are now, on Wednesday. That's the first time we've done them. Uh, and I went the way I did the first one. The second one, I thought, just going to smack it as hard as I can. And thankfully, you know, it went straight down the middle and another goal. So brilliant. Well, there's a lot of questions about the goalkeeping situation in the lead up. What about Nick Feely coming back for injury to, to start today? How big was that? Uh, I don't know, all part of the mind games. I didn't know he was going to play either. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad that he did. And, you know, he kept a clean sheet and kept us solid at the back. So, yeah, whoever's in net for us, brilliant. And what do you think was the key today? It's obviously a hot-tempered derby match out there. What do you think was the key to the result? Um, I think, obviously, it was, from our point of view, was um, going into the game with the way we approached the game against them in the last two league games. Obviously, we've got the better of them both times. I think the red card obviously helped us, but we started the game the better side, uh, high intensity, and then, obviously, um, did enough to go in front. The penalty and the red card helped us, there's no doubt about that. But, yeah, we showed out the game and you know, did the right things to win it in the end. And uh, you've got plenty more to play for this season with the final series coming up? Definitely, yeah. That's um, one down for us, I suppose. And then there's still, like you say, loads to play for. So hopefully we can um, you know, take that in our stride now and use that to, to spring some momentum into what we've got going on for the back end of the season. Joe Guest, congratulations, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you for that, Josh. Joe Guest really has been the architect of yet another magic moment for the Oakley Cannons. He's really, uh, alongside Chris Taylor, they've been the two big pieces of the puzzle to help build what is, is slowly becoming a Cannons dynasty. And you can't help but wonder, as we get towards the official trophy and medal presentation, whether Joe Guest might be leaving with yet another individual honour for his name. But in anticipation of that trophy presentation, we're going to wrap it up here from the broadcast booth here at Kingston Heath. It's been a pleasure to have your company for a great Doherty Cup final. Oakley the champions defeating Heidelberg United 3-0 from myself, Lockie Flanagan and Nick Dubano. We sign off for now, but let's throw it down to the trophy presentation. To present the awards, we have Football Victoria board member Harry Zeitman. And Flea, we would like to thank the match officials, without whom this game would not have been possible. Thank you to Yanni Zizis, Astro Sakalis, Mark Tito and Ross Clark. We would also like to acknowledge and thank both Mitre and Sportsmart, who have generously supported the referees and today's event.
We would now like to present the Jimmy Mackay medal to signify the player of the match as voted by the match officials. Here to present the award, we have Marilyn Mackay, Jimmy's wife. And it's with great pleasure to announce the player of the match for today's Doherty Cup final is from the Oakley Cannons, number 10, Joe Guest. We'd now like to welcome Heidelberg United to collect their runners-up medals. We have number 25, Pierce Clark. Number two, Shunsuke Murakami. Number four, Jamal Ali. Number five, Aydin Fedahajic. Number six, Anthony Leziotis. Number 12, Dion Nikolaitis. Number 14, Kane Shepard. Number 17, Josh Pinn. Number 18, Anthony Theodoropoulos. Number 19, Sean Ellis. Number one, Brendan White. Number three, Muhammad Idara. Number eight, Owen Ashton. Number 10, Dominic Faller. Number 21, Bilal Habib. And the captain, number nine, Adrian Zara. And the head coach, George Katsakis. And now the 2023 Doherty Cup champions, the Oakley Cannons. Number one, Nick Feely. Number three, Connor Hampson. Number five, Anton Milinaric. Number seven, Alex Fechner. Number nine, Alex Salmon. Number 15, Brody Boyce. Number 19, Oliver Kubelay. Number 20, Daniel Clark. Number 22, Stefan Valentini. Number 23, Emlyn Wellsmore. Number two, Brandon Lundy. Number six, Jacob Eliopoulos. Number 11, Wade Decker. Number 18, Kingsley Sinclair. Number 24, Chris Lucas. And the captain, number 10, Joe Guest. And I'd also like to invite the head coach, Chris Taylor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just um, first thing I want to do is thank Heidelberg uh, for the competitive effort today, George and all the boys. Uh, tough tough uh, game for you out there today. Probably a few decisions didn't go your way. Um, all in all, uh, great set of boys that we got. Uh, really proud of you all uh, and the club as well. First time we won the Doherty Cup, so um, it's a big one for us. And all the supporters that came tonight. Um, I know there's quite a few here from Oakley, so thank you very much. Thank you.
And now I'll invite the head coach of the Oakley Cannons, Chris Taylor, and the captain, Joe Guest, to accept the 2023 Doherty Cup trophy. Thank you. 